Jesus' name we pray. Father, we thank you for this time. We pray as we want to look into this seminar. Father, come and speak to us. Teach us, oh God, things that we know already. Let them be ah. settled in our hearts and things that we don't know. Let them give us the baton so that we'll be able to run this race you have set before us in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name we pray. We're looking at the first seminar, the enterprising house leader. Uh, we really thank God for the foundation that has already been le laid for this uh, seminar, which we'll be building on. And this is going to be a very, uh, we'll try to make it as practical as possible. Um, and we'll be looking at that enterprising. So let's uh, have a very quick definition. We have already had um, uh, an introduction to that. Enterprising means having the resourcefulness. We, we saw this word in our verse uh, uh, message uh, just now, the resourcefulness taking the initiative, and the initiative, the, the, the opposite of it, the enemy of it is waiting. And we also saw that uh, instead of waiting, taking the initiative, having the drive to recognize opportunities and the motivation to make the most of them. And of course, a house leader in our context refers to anyone who starts or leads um, a home church. And Entrepreneurship, uh, it is directly correlated to this. That's why we have it as the enterprising house leader because starting something is is what entrepreneurs do, but also leading something. So sometimes you could be in a company and you don't have to start all over, but you are given a branch to lead. Uh, you're also considered as entrepreneur. Let's look at some of the uh some of the qualities we have seen it already i will not spend too much time on it the characteristics that we have to have and the mindset i want us to have there are two mindsets you can have it could be the first could be that uh there are a certain group of people that qualify for this that could be one mindset the other mindset could be whatever it takes to be at that level i will do it and that's that mindset i want us to have because each and every one of us here has been has received a great commission and we are able to do it in jesus name now let's look at some of them you're able to take the initiative you do not wait you are able to start something to go for it as our pastor has said uh, you are able to if if something is missing you go and ask you don't sit and wait for it to be done you are a visionary we'll look at that uh, in depth later you are resourceful we have seen that word coming back you are seasons in the word of god and you are a bishop let's just read that very quickly it's important for us to read that let's go to first timothy chapter 2 first timothy first timothy chapter 3 I'm reading from verse 2. A, a bishop then must be blameless, the husband of one wife, vigilant, sober, of good behavior, given to hospitality, apt to teach, not given to wine, no striker, no greed, not greedy or filter liquor, but, but patience, not a brawler, not covetous, one that ruled his own well his own house, having his children in subjection with all gravity amen so we have to you have to be a bishop uh be motivation be motivated and have a drive if you look at what we have on the screen possess an entrepreneurial spirit be ready to take up things and go as soon as paul had seen the vision we got ready to leave for macedonia concluding that god had called us to preach his gospel he did not wait they did not say let's wait and see uh let's 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 pray a little bit more he got up immediately as soon as he got the vision he went we are receiving that vision and as soon as you leave here you are able to take it and run with it in jesus name we'll look at some of the practical and essential duties how do you do it in practice now the first thing and what are some of the duties of an entrepreneurial uh, an enterprising house leader a pastor a home leader you don't have to be appointed to be that you can develop these things now the first thing is prayer because there is a difference between a business and a spirit and something spiritual setting up the house of god if you have if you have all the qualities, the characteristics that meet to make a business, if you take ice cream and you go to sell in the desert and there are people who can afford it, that business will thrive because it is very warm there. It is automatic. But you might have all 
you, your church might be very well arranged, your home may be, everything may be well done, but people will still not come. Why? Because this is something spiritual. You have to pray. So a house leader must be importunate in prayer, daily interceding for, for the flock. If you have a home church, you can usually engage the larger church. The more people that pray, the more powerful it is. And you can you have constant session. A prayer group can be formed also by comprising a few members of the home church. You can say you can call on a brother or a sister and have prayer cells for people to keep praying. Praying for the, the establishment, praying for the growth, praying for the members, praying for their welfare. That is very 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 important teaching you must be seasoned in the scriptures you have to learn and know the word of god and how can you do this practically if you are not there yet today you're wondering but i am not a pastor how can i lead a home church i'm not a, i've not been appointed how can i lead that you can read the word of god understand the word of god daily listening to messages there are a lot of books Christian books you can listen, you can, you, you can read. If you don't have the time, you can listen to audio books to develop yourselves. There are seminars, there are conferences like this that really build you up. You can attend those seminars. And if you need counsel, you need you, there's something that uh, you are not sure of, ask your pastor or call a higher person, an elder in the house of God. All these things will build you up to be a seasoned house leader. And the other uh, uh, essential duty is counseling. You are the first counselor. Uh, you are the first person. Uh, you are responsible for conflict resolution. And uh, in, even in times of crisis, in times of grief, mourn with them that mourn, weep with them that mourn, rejoice with those who rejoice. And if the cases are complicated, you should call on your pastor. So these are some of the uh, spiritual. So I've, I'm divided in, in, into three. The first part is a spiritual emphasis. We'll be going to the second part. Quickly, the vision and outreach for God. So how, what is the role, what is the attitude of the uh, enterprising house leader when it comes to growth and expansion of the church? You should have a vision. Habakkuk chapter 2, Habakkuk chapter 2, verse 2. It says, And the Lord answered me and said, Write the vision and make it plain upon tables that he may run that readeth it. What is a vision? Where do you want to go? What is the plan for the growth? What are the landmarks? Where, where do you want to achieve? What are the number of people you want to get? How, what, what is the st your spiritual state? How many workers? At what stage? Those things have to be written. As a house leader, you should have a vision. You should not just be satisfied with people coming. And people going, not just satisfied with having 10 people, 5 people. Where are you going to? Where do you want to achieve in a few years? Where do you want to achieve in 5 years, in 10 years, in a few months? What are those kind of things? You have to know them and write them down as the word of God has told us. And secondly, you take the lead in outreach. When it's time for evangelism, when it's time for mobilizing members, facilitating their movements, printing tracks, launching social media campaigns. You may also need help from the larger church. You could be, we could have Eindhoven Church, and you say, well, uh, the, the, the baby church we want to bring is Stilberg, for example, now. We want the whole church to come together, and we go and visit that place. We go and visit, uh, we, we go and preach the gospel there. You, as the house leader, you have to take that lead. You have to be there at the forefront. If somebody has an issue and cannot make it, you have to be able to help. And also take advantage of the uh, try to maximize every business owner maximizes the 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 the, uh, the uh, these opportunities they have they could be an event they could be something like a chemist going on they could be a, a gathering they could be an event in the neighborhood you maximize it and you go there and you share tracks and you invite people they could be even a football event or other things like that try to be able to identify those things and bring uh, and make it and, and use it to grow the house of God. Also, after having preached and evangelized the word of God, a leader should be able to drop a follow-up plan. And remember, follow-up should be follow-up and visitation for both the members who are already coming and those who are vis we are visited and called on to be uh, attending. So uh, you can divide that. You can. Uh, uh, give responsibilities to a few people and say, okay, uh, two of you are responsible for this group, two of you are responsible for this brother and this brother. Make sure that it is clear. Uh, and the Lord will bless us in Jesus' name. The last part, leadership and management. 
Now, uh, one of the main responsibilities also is care. You are the first point of contact as a leader uh, in the house church. And besides spiritual counseling, you should have a listening ear to whatever issues that are plaguing members and develop a proactive approach in solving them. And what I mean by proactive approach is we should understand the profile of our brethren. And as a leader, we should be able to take that approach, take that initiative to, to do a little bit of research around. You may be handling students, do a little bit of research. What are some of the issues that students face? You may be handling couples, you may be handling families. Sometimes people have issues with finding a job, uh, looking for an education, issues with residents, different things. You might not have all the answers, but try to be so resourceful that people can come to you and you can channel them to the people that, that can give them the right answer. So you're always uh, proactive and you should be ready to do some research on practical issues that members may face and also be available that's important. Let's be available for the people. And finally, uh, management, as you have seen the example of Moses where he appointed judges, we should also be able to identify individuals by their commitments and by their relevant experience. You could see a woman who is uh, experienced, she's elderly, she's able to handle uh, some of those issues. You say, well, I want you to be able to, to handle that. And the same thing with the youth section, the, the uh, finance section, people who have, who have proven, who have shown that they have experience, and also with the leading of the Holy Spirit as you are praying, uh, the Lord is going to lead you to do that. Uh, and also in the follow-up team, we are able to appoint the right and the relevant people. And a house leader must be able to quickly identify growth boosters and capitalize on them. What do I mean by growth boosters? Growth boosters are things that, uh, events that you could have organized, things that you see that, oh, I can identify this. We had a barbecue, for example, and that day we had 40 people in the church. We had 50, we had more. That is something that makes the, 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 uh, that boosts the growth. We had a prayer session and we prayed for people and people got saved, people got delivered and they kept on growing. So we multiplied those. So you should always be attentive. What are the growth boosters and also what are the things that hinder growth? Be attentive to identify those things and capitalize on them if they are positive and also avoid them if they are negative. I would like to end by this slide. Now, from what we have uh, discussed uh, what, what I've explained, you would have seen that there is a lot of responsibility on the house leader. There is a lot of work that is available. There is a lot of work that should be done. Now, if you look at the tree, most of the time when you see the tree, uh, people seen from the naked eye, they see the tree from above. And the tree, when you see it, you do not see necessarily the root system. But if you can look at this picture, you will see that the root system is just as developed as the system above the tree with the branches and with the leaves. And now you do not see that. And when a, a, a tree, before it's, when it's planted, it starts growing under as well, as well as it's growing up. And when it's growing under, it's deprived of light. It's dep it has to grow through the soil. If you look at a tree growing up, it does not have all those barriers. It grows and it pushes down through the soil so that it will be able to have a strong foundation. And all that work, that hard work, people do not see it. But they see the beauty of the tree from above. They see how the tree has grown, how it has expanded, and they can admire that. But there is a lot of work, a lot of pushing, a lot of work in the dark that went unseen. Whatever work we are doing, whatever, uh, if, you are, if you are going to start doing the work of God, if you're going to start a home church, it might be difficult. It might be things that people don't see. The time you spent in prayer, it might be the work of the roots under. But that is what would hold you. And at the end of the day, you see that that root system, it both gives the tree the nutrients it needs to keep on growing, but it also keeps the tree grounded. And it keeps the tree firm. And it is a difficult work that many people do not see, but it is there. I want to encourage us as we, as we, we, as we can see on the slides, let us not be weary. In well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not in Jesus' name. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Let's commit ourselves into the Lord. Let's commit ourselves to the hands of the Lord. We have learned about the enterprising leader, the practical things. And we have learned, we have learned how 
it is available to all. It is not limited to any specific person. If you're able to develop yourself and get the attributes of the bishop, if you're able to do that, if you're able to make yourself an enterprising person, a a proactive person, someone who takes initiative, who does not wait, you are able to set up this church. You're able to start this home church. You're able to start something. And if there is anything that you have, you are are sitting and thinking, God, I'm struggling with that. Preach and say, God, I need your help today so that, Lord, you'll be able to help me, that I'll be able to gain this quality. If there is a quality that you miss, if there's something that you are missing, that you are lacking, pray and say, God, help me to be able to gain it oh god if it's is it the knowledge of the word of god is it being proactive is it being taking the initiative is it moving around mobilizing people for evangelism is it putting the effort putting the work in anything that you need say god i want you to put it in me oh lord i want to be able to be rounded in 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 leading or starting a home church and running it if you do not have the vision you want to pray god i want the vision put that vision in me put that vision in me so you can write it plain and run with it pray that god is going to give you that grace you are good god is going to give you that ability you are starting today remember as you have read they did not wait immediately as soon as they got the vision they went as soon as you're getting the vision you will not stay back you will not turn around you will not think you will not calculate it you move you will move immediately And have you been doing it and it seems difficult? Remember the example of the tree? Remember the rooting system? It is, is it hard? Is it, is, it, is, it, is, it, is, it, is it unseen by people? Is it not appreciated? It is the foundation you are planting. You are deepening yourself. You are getting strong. You are pushing through the soil in the dark where there is no light. You are pushing through. Unfortunate in prayer, in the study of the word of God, in evangelizing. You are pushing through, you are going through, you are doing what you have to do. One day you will shoot up through the soil. And when you do that, nothing, there will be no more ground to hold you. Nothing will hold you anymore. Say, God, I don't want to give up. I want to keep on going. I want to keep on going. I want to keep on going. In prayer, in studying the word of God, in evangelizing, in in counseling, in all the, the, the arrows that you may be receiving left and right, you keep on going. You keep on going. All the blockages, all the difficulties, the soil can be hard at times. Yet, the roots find a way to go deeper and deeper and deeper. You will keep finding that way. You will not give up. 